Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. There's a lot of things about me you don't know anything about, Daddy. Things you wouldn't understand. Things you couldn't understand. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner, Daddy. A rebel. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. What you talking about, huh? Bam! You're a cheat and a swindler. That's what you are. Now, let me talk to the young people here. You are prey, P-R-E-Y, for these churches. Brand new believers, pray for these churches. P-R-E-Y. It's sexy. It's cool. Calvinism, man. Because I got God in the box. I call that bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. The gospel's not something we live. It is an announcement of what God has done in Christ through the cross by grace to give eternal hope to those who have faith in him. Please, continue. When a rebel's out of secret. This is a Rebel's Cause Radio with Jonathan Wedgworth and your host, the tattooed freak of a man, Dan Fry. That is right. I am that tattooed freak of the man. They call me Papa Tat on the chat, Father Tattoo from the pew. And of course, my given Christian name, the one I prefer to be called, the one my parents gave me, just Dan Fry, host of a Rebel's Cause Radio. Joining me in studio today, uh, we've got a full cast and we've got a pretty awesome guest. We're going to start off with uh, La La Luke. He's back. Good evening. So he, His he, hair didn't make it back with him. My hair did not make it back. <laughs> None of it. Like your facial hair is gone. Facial hair. You had a beautiful beard. Now you just had, have a double chin. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's being very generous. Is that too. a third one too I see there? It's on its way. Yes. Sir. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Mr. Brian Weirdbeard Puritan Peters, also known as BWBPP. And then uh, we got Jonon. Ah, see, then I messed up yours. Jonon. Yeah, Jonon. <laughs> Jonon. Jonon. Jano. We got this nerd who was talking to Brian about nerdy things. Mega, and, Mega Drive versus Genesis. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, and I realized how embarrassed I am of my friends. That is what I've realized. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I am wearing a suit coat tonight for those of you watching the web coat. Yes, I couldn't be outdone with Brian. If we're going to take hints from uh, Ed Long, I just want to look better than you. I'm going to wear a bow tie. Yeah, well, he would like oh, that. Dude, Maybe I you would, should get the long shoes. I would love to see one of these the days. You guys tie. are going to both come in here and like full on regalia and yeah, well, you know, just be one upping each other. We're, we're working on it right now. He goes to Puritan Reform Seminary. I go to Lamp. We're just having this battle. It's, it's going to happen. <laughs> we'll, we'll start uh, pitting the, uh, systematic theologies against each other any, any day now. So, uh, joining us, and uh, we will quit wasting time. Uh, because his time is valuable. We have a uh, Mr. Odd Thomas from uh, Humble Beast. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about Humble Beast, then you haven't been listening to the show. Uh, I I think I bring these guys up almost every week. Uh, they're my guys. Uh, they've got propaganda. They've got beautiful eulogy. Uh, they've got Alert 312, which is one of my favorites. They got that album they just dropped is amazing. Of course, uh, Beautiful Eulogy was my favorite album uh, last year for sure. Uh, you've got Theory Has It, uh, Citizen Aim, who, who who died, so, I mean, they have him in spirit. And uh, I don't know, who else am I missing, Odd Thomas? What else do you got for artists out there? Um, we have Lee Green. Okay. We also have uh, a gentleman by the name of Forknown. Oh, yeah, yeah, Forknown, sure. Yeah, and we have a couple folks that we haven't really announced yet that are coming out soon uh, once we make our announcement, so... Yeah, that's that pretty much sews it up. Yeah, it, I I got to be honest, I was so surprised when I saw that first beautiful eulogy uh, video, uh, which is entitled "Beautiful Eulogy." It was the first time I'd been introduced to you guys. I I'd seen Propaganda's Gospel and forgotten about it. Uh, not that it wasn't a good video, but I just had never gone back to it. Uh, the quality that you guys do has raised the bar in my mind for Christian hip hop. Do you agree? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We strive to be excellent in what we do for the sake of influence uh, with the gospel. So it means a lot when we hear folks um, telling us that what we do is excellent. That's part of our mission statement. Sure. Well, I I, I really am a big fan. Uh, I'm wearing your uh, Anchor My Soul t-shirt right now. Yeah. 
So <laughs> I, I, I'm starting. To, I have. I'm a Harley Davidson fan. I'm starting to rival my Humble Beast collection versus my heart because I got the Humble Beast <laughs> one. I just bought the uh, Tortoise uh, T uh, Alert Three One Two one that just came out. The Kill the Elephants. Yeah. He's yeah. been he's been wearing a Humble Beast shirt or another for the past like three or four weeks. Yeah. Well, I got a. I got three three of them. Three of them. So, you know, thank you. I'll have to send you some more. You're giving us some free promotion. So, well, hey, you know what? I am open to free shirts, but I'm just as content to support you guys buying them, too. So, right so let's kind of get into the uh, the interview here, because I, I know I know you're a busy guy and I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, where let, let's start back at the beginning before you were odd, Thomas. What, who did you go by and who were you? Uh, so my government name is Thomas. Um, and so the name was kind of given to me by some friends um, who thought it was a little odd that I do hip hop music. Um, primarily, I think, because I don't look much like a hip hopper. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like that's how that's who I was. I started rapping when I was probably 13 years old. OK, um, just kind of in schools with folks who, who would rap and we would freestyle and stuff. And then uh, roughly around the age of 18, the Lord was pleased to save me. So uh, shortly after the Lord saved me, I stopped rapping for a little while um, and then realized that I could use hip hop as a medium to communicate the gospel to friends um, that I, I knew well and that I cared for and wanted to see them come to know uh, Jesus rightly. And so I started putting uh, songs together where I would kind of communicate the gospel and, and just kind of use that as a medium and a tool. And in, in some cases, it was uh, successful. In some, it was a failure. But the Lord was sovereign over those things. So, yeah. Okay, so you, you've you used several key phrases here that I find really interesting and incredibly biblical. So I just want to point them out. Uh, he said the Lord was pleased to save him. So you didn't say, say the sinner's prayer? That's not how you came to salvation? Um, I, I, I must confess, I did say a sinner's prayer. Um but that wasn't the medium that saved me. Okay. So, yeah. and, and, and then you said God is sovereign, which yeah. was which is kind of problematic for some people, I think. So uh, now your lyrics and a lot of your songs uh, talk about the sovereignty of God. I know in the beautiful eulogy CD, uh, which is, I, I have your older works and I want to discuss those also, um, but the beautiful eulogy CD is kind of where you guys are heading now. We had Braille on what, like three months ago, John? Three months? Sounds right. We had him before Black History Month, so three months ago. Um, and Braille said that you guys were kind of focusing on beautiful eulogy rather than on uh, being individuals in the rap game. Is that Would that be fair to say? Yeah. You know, I wonder if it's possible to reduce your guys' volume to, to me because it's really hard to distinguish what you're saying. It's a little distorted. Okay. I, I think I'm kind of making it out. I'm following your lips a little bit, but... Oh, man. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll bring it down. Okay. But yeah, I think what you were asking is that um, is our primary focus, like Braille, Odd Thomas, and Cortland Urbano, Beautiful Eulogy. Um, and that's definitely, if that's the question, yes, that's absolutely true. Um, Braille and I both run the label, and we found it very difficult a few years ago um, as we tried to pioneer this ministry and, and uh, try to make the most of it. He would always be in different parts of the country touring, and I would be in different parts of the country uh, and so since we were the only ones that were really running the label, it was incredibly difficult. Uh, so that was one variable. Then the other thing is when we were working on Braille's record, Native Lungs, we found that there was a, a really good chemistry between us, uh, the three of us. So Cortland Urbano, myself and Brian, when we were in the studio, things just sort of made sense to us. Um, and then we kind of realized at that, at that point that it might be easier and more effective in terms of our ministry uh, to kind of put our efforts together. We could travel together. We could hold each other accountable. We could uh, make music uh, synergistically. Uh, and so, yeah, Beautiful Eulogy has become the primary means for Braille, myself, and Cortland Urbano to put out music. <clears throat> well, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that you guys putting your talents together like that really makes an amazing um, uh, musical product that you're using to glorify God. Thank you. Well, and Irving, uh, Cort Cortland Urbano comes out with some of the craziest beats I've ever heard. Like his uh, his Perception, I think, is it called Perception? Is that his album that yeah. he's got? Yeah. Is that the one where we use the bumper music It Sounds Like an Atari Game? Uh, might be. We Yeah, wow. we, we borrowed some of his stuff. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big video game geek, so I think in those terms. Um, yeah, yeah, just he, he does some crazy stuff. And, of course, the plunking 
on, on the beautiful eulogy self self-titled song the plucking on the piano strings to me was what got me excited i was like i've never seen that before and then yeah. it all kicked in and that whole song was awesome um so let's back up just a second here so uh what's your what kind of church do you belong to so I am a uh, member of a church called Trinity Church of Portland. Um, our pastor is Art Azurdia. That's all, all the beautiful eulogy members attend the same church. Uh, so, yeah, it's a non-denominational church, uh, but we love our church very much. Uh, the church is very supportive of our efforts, our ministry. They send us out. They pray for us. Um, we have a very good relationship with our church. It's a small church, um, I would probably say roughly 200 people. Yeah. I mean, I guess some people wouldn't call that small. But yeah, you're, you're small. talking to three guys that wouldn't call that small. We, we're we're <laughs> Presbyterians. We're used to like 60 people. So Right on, right on. Well, from, from most of the places where we go and we travel, um, our church seems real, really small. But it's a very cool community, very loving, affectionate people, people who are radically zealous for the gospel, um, zealous for lost people, zealous for theology. Um, they just want to see people know God rightly and worship God rightly. And so, um, yeah, love my church. Love my church. TrinityPortland.com. I'm going to plug them because... Please do. Yeah. And, and I've actually listened to some of Art Azurdia's uh, sermons, and I was I was, I was, was very pleased. Art um, Azurdia is pretty amazing. I know I, of him through Wretched right Yeah, now. I really like his stuff. I mean, not that he needs my approval, but it definitely, <laughs> like, I liked what I heard. Now, um, would you guys call yourself Reformed? Hmm... Um, I, well, I guess it depends, right? Um, so I would say that there's certain parts uh, that I would consider myself reformed, maybe like soteriologically, or um, I, I don't really hold the creeds or confessions. I mean, I, I do, I like the creeds and confessions, but uh, I'm not reformed in the larger sense of the, the term. Sure. Um, I would consider myself probably an evangelical Calvinist. So basically a John MacArthur uh, kind of kind of guy that way. No, not that either. Um, <laughs> well, thanks. I'm glad. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate John MacArthur. We just, we probably have a lot of different views, but <clears throat> yeah, I love John MacArthur. Yeah. I, I'm not saying we have a problem with John MacArthur, but I don't. Well, I just, by that, I just meant that he's reformed soteriologically. He's a five pointer, but then he's not really reformed beyond that point. That's what I was driving at. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say that's, that's legit. Okay, so we've gone kind of over your theological. Now, did, were you always at Trinity? Did you come from a different background and anything like that? Yeah, well, it wasn't always at Trinity. Trinity is a fairly new church. Uh, we celebrated our two-year anniversary about four or five months ago, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, so it's it's a fairly new church plant. I'm originally from the uh, Southern California area. Okay. Uh, so I moved out to Portland. My wife and I moved to Portland uh, almost five years ago uh, with kind of a vision to just move and get out of Los Angeles and uh, maybe start a ministry, Humble Beast or whatever. So, but before that, I, I, I got actually was introduced to the gospel um, at a Foursquare church. Foursquare. And, uh, Do you know what that was, is? Uh, it's going to be broadly charismatic, right? Indeed. It was a charismatic church. Yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah, I was familiar with it. Yeah, sorry, Similar I'm the to, one out. Uh, assemblies of God, I, I think. Okay, okay, I'm familiar with those. Okay. Yeah, so they they were uh, they were gracious and loving enough to share the gospel with me. Uh, so I was there for a great deal of you know maybe five years or so, uh, and then kind of wandered off on my own for a little bit. Was became pretty liberal, I would say, if that's even I don't know if you can be considered a liberal Christian, but okay, we'll give you grace there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of floated on my own, to try to figure stuff out on my own. I was very autonomous and just try to figure out stuff on my own. And then probably when I turned 28, some reform dudes started to pour into me. Uh, they began to disciple me, help me to understand uh, my Bible, help me to understand God, um, helped me to figure out some theological things that were really necessary for me to understand. All right, hold on a second. This is a, we're, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. We are talking with Odd Thomas from Humble Beast. Uh, we are up on our first break. When we get back, we're going to talk to Thomas about his aversion to guns, because he's got a, 
a whole song dedicated to gun control. So we're gonna we're gonna question him about that because I don't know. That scares me. This is Rebels Cause Radio. We encourage you to read your Bibles, go to church, love Jesus, forsake the world, and uh, stay right there because we'll be right back. Lead owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am Administrative Manager. I am the Senior Technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Find yourself in danger when you're threatened by a stranger When it looks like you will take a licking <laughs> oh, <super chicken. laughs> We know that there are a lot of great radio shows that you could be a fan of But there is only one that's certified organic, free range, and cage free Just like that hippie chicken you ate for dinner <laughs> This is a Rebels Cause Radio uh, that is right. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am Papa Tat on the chat, Father Tattoo from the Pew. I'm I'm not going to do this whole thing again. I'm just Dan Fry, the host of a Rebels Cause Radio. Thank you. Joining me in studio today, we've got Luke, we've got Brian, Weird Beard, Peart, and Peter, and of course, uh, What's John. What's his name? <laughs> Judas. Uh, that, that, no, he's not Judas. He's yeah. always Judas. Look, he, he, he asked me. I even, He asked you. Look, I know, but I'm the one that grants the nicknames on this show. He said, don't call me Judas. I, I told him the whole time we were talking about the good Judas. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but so he doesn't want to be called Judas anymore, so he's no longer my Judas of a friend. He's just John. He's still kind of a Judas of a friend. <laughs> that doesn't go away. <laughs> I uh, thought you were going to say, he's not my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, you're just my, uh, you're, you're the good Judas of a friend. You're, you're a good brother. A, a the good, zealot. A, a, Judas the zealot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The other Judas. No, but is it Simon the Zealot? It's Simon the Zealot. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Whatever. I wasn't going to correct you. Brian, Brian, on the other hand, couldn't help but make faces. So <laughs> that's all right. Uh, joining us on the phone today, we are actually on Skype. Sorry, on Skype. Uh, we've got Odd Thomas from Humble Beast. And uh, he, he kind of, uh, the first segment, he told us a little bit about where he came from. And uh, he uh, 
talked a little bit about his conversion. And now I want to talk to about talk to him about his aversion to guns. And, and so, so Thomas, I, I was listening to a song mm, three or four months ago from a not it's it's one of your solo al- albums. Uh, I can't remember if you have one or two. If it's Braille, that's got two. Um, but you got a song about gun control and how we don't need uh, semi-automatic weapons. Yeah. Yeah. What's that about? So <clears throat> let me just clarify a little bit. Okay. Um, that song is actually pretty old. Sure. Right. So song was written a long time ago. Uh, I was much more passionate, uh, about the issue. I've since had a lot of conversations with, uh, some good folks, um, that actually own guns. And, uh, so anyway, I, I wrote that song when I was much more of a firecracker, um, and then secondly, the, the song, the concept was not so much about uh, gun control, but it was more so about accountability. So it was really the media's uh, over glorification of guns and violence uh, and, you know, just the whole nine. So I really don't have, at least at this point, I've, I've matured a little bit more. Um, I really don't have an issue um, with, yeah, I'm not like... Nobody should have guns. Sure. I think responsible people uh, should own guns. I don't think felons should have guns. Sure. Uh, you don't. But, you don't have to qualify. We're not. We're not the the gun police. We. Yeah. Have... No. No. It's. I'm, it's. It's okay. I'm just explaining. Sure. That I did write this song shortly after uh, Columbine, and I was very, uh, just really taken back at what I had experienced, uh, both from the access to guns. Uh, the kind of media's glorification of it, the media kind of not taking any responsibility for it, sure. um, even though they they fund millions of dollars for movies that promote gun violence and things mm-hmm. of that nature. So it was just a, a rant, and it was probably, I would say now that I've matured a, a lot, that probably could have done without that song. But uh, That's okay, though. I, I just thought it was interesting. I was like, well, that's weird, because we agree on so much, and then there's a there's a point where I'm like, Hmm, I don't know if I feel that way. But so that's, that, but that's okay to be challenged inside the music. I don't. I didn't. I didn't mind it. It didn't offend me. Uh, I. I think people being passionate about that. That issue. I think there's reason to be passionate on either side of that debate. Mm-hmm. So um, that song dates back to the late '90s, then. Yeah, I mean it's fairly old. That that record, "Divine Use of Animosity and Ridicule," was a, it's a fairly old record. Okay, because on Rhapsody it shows 2006. I I guess I thought it was a mid 2000s thing. Rhapsody yeah, so started got, in 2000. So when it, when you go through different distribution channels, they'll just kind of print when they picked up the distribution okay. for it. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's it's a pretty old record. Okay. Right on. Well, that I just wondered about that because I heard that and I thought it, it was it. What struck me as odd is is kind of in the middle of a gospel record, and then you got the song about guns, and that's what really struck me as odd. More than anything else, uh, more than the position. Yeah. Uh, well, on that record, so I, I, I definitely would say that I've grown a lot since that time. I, I made that record like in a transitional period in my life, mm-hmm. both um, politically, theologically, um, socially, just a whole, a whole bunch of issues. So when you listen to that record, there's a lot of ranting. Uh, so I talk about politics. I talk about uh, yeah, church, you know, everything. So it was just a, a, that record was like a ranting record, hence the name, the divine use of animosity and ridicule. Hmm. So it's a, it's a good snapshot of an earlier stage in sanctification. Indeed. Indeed. And God has been gracious and yeah, maturity does wonders for people, I think. And, um, a proper, I think a proper biblical worldview and understanding God's, um, complete, ultimate authority over all things um, just kind of helps you to put in perspective life, you know? And sure. So. Well, and, and I, you know, like I said, I just, I thought it was fun. I thought I'd bring it up. It's kind of controversial a little bit. So I thought, Hey, Hey, let's just throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Well, <laughs> y- yeah, but more or less. Well, you guys are kind of known for your controversial stuff. Uh, I, Alert came out with a song uh, called Damn, which uh, was kind of interesting. Uh, I, Oh, and then there was that one propaganda thing about the... the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the precious Puritans, which John's still offended about. No, I wasn't offended by it. I just... I, I love it. Let's burn the paper popes. But Wait, that was... 
that that was propaganda as a rapper on Odd Thomas's label. He has a he has an author uh, he he has a song called Precious Puritans. I'm aware of the song. I, I'm sure okay. you are because okay. you're probably offended by it. <laughs> me personally. I loved the song because uh-huh. I think we raise these men up way higher than they need to be, way higher higher than they would want you to take them, and and, yeah. and we end up kind of uh, I don't know we kind of putting them over 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 scripture rather than scripture over them, and it becomes problematic. I I think the Westminster Confessions. Brian is one of those things that some people appeal to as if it was scripture. And while I like the Westminster Confessions and affirm it, it's not something that needs to be raised up to the level uh, above scripture. I and think so, you're just meeting different people than I do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. And uh, and you know, and what I think, what and get, tell me if I'm if I'm right here, but what propaganda was trying to do there. Uh, or tell me if I'm wrong, rather. Uh, what propaganda was trying to do there was expose that we're, we're raising men up that had sin problems and we're, we're ignoring the sin problems. And, and and to some people, those sin problems are a real big problem with the African-American community uh, being, you know, some of the, the slavery stuff's kind of a pretty big issue to them and, and would be offensive. And there, there, are more, there are guys today that would be better to quote than the Puritans. Yeah, I think to, to defend... Uh... So every time an artist on Humble Beast creates content or a song, it's presented to both Brian or Braille and myself. And we have to make the decision, um, should we let this go or should we, we pass on it? And we kind of have a, an in-house thing that, that basically is like controversy for the sake of controversy is sinful, but controversy for the sake of the gospel is, is okay. And so we believe that propaganda is end game for that song precious puritans was uh, don't fix your eyes on the puritans fix your eyes on jesus all of us are messed up people we all are in need of grace uh, but really the, the key person that we should be focusing our eyes on is jesus mm-hmm. so he he attempted to even say that we're all crooked sticks that god uses to draw straight lines well, and that's the thing that kind of that kind of um that's nice. At the end, he's he, he, he's not really decrying the Puritans. He's decrying an overemphasis on the Puritans. That's yeah. yeah that's, that's my understanding. Can I just ask though? And I'm a big Puritan fact, guy. We, we read Puritans, and so the, the the thing was like, don't do away with Puritans. It's saying don't just make sure that you don't put Puritans at the same level as uh, as the scriptures, as the authority of scripture. The the question that I'd have, and I, I just if you didn't catch, uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm currently taking courses through Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary, so I'm, I'm not coming at this from an unbiased perspective here. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't see a, a, a huge problem with people flocking to the Puritans as great teachers in modern American Christianity. But these, they're not saying that it's a big problem. What they're saying is that we ought to, to take, what, take what's good from there, acknowledge it, and then put our eyes on Jesus, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think some people look at Puritans from a cultural context, um, and a lot of African-American men view, uh, yeah, anyway. Can, can I ask you, who are you, who, because this is a thing, I heard about it, um, and I read a little bit about it, uh, but I was just curious, who, who do you have in mind as the Puritans? Well, I will let propaganda Sure. Like speak up for his song. Uh, so well, I, and we're, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm going to basically say that we endorse the song because when he presented it to us, he presented his logical or his mm-hmm. his order of thinking in the process. And at the end game, we felt since he threw himself under the same bus as Puritans, um, we, we figured it was OK. But I'll, I'll let you guys have a dialogue with propaganda about it. And we're not sure. trying to run that song through into the ground either. I mean, you know, we're not trying to diss on it. It's just it's an interesting discussion. I, you know, if for it, that song aside, which I, I like that mm-hmm. song, Brian, I, I think it's great. Anytime we can knock, you know, the problem isn't the Puritans. I don't want to knock John Owens down. I don't want to sure. knock any of these guys down. The people that quote them as if they're scripture, though, it doesn't bother me that they're I just don't it. encounter a lot of those people. Well, yeah. I don't know. I'll, I, meet you guys, I'll meet you guys in the middle. There does exist a, a whole large culture of people who all they do is quote Puritans. Yeah. They, it's, it's my Facebook wall every morning. I don't even have to read them anymore because it's all on my Facebook wall. I think we're, I think a lot of, I think mostly Out of context, no less. I think mostly we're all in agreement here, but in terms of emphasis, I'll meet Dan and Brian squarely in the middle. Okay. Good for you, John. So <laughs> sweet. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we established that. Yeah. John, John is meeting us in the middle. 
we're good. I'm still spitting chips out of my mouth when I'm talking. This is a great radio show. And and we probably offended our poor guests. Now, Thomas, uh, you you said earlier that you and Brian run Humble Beast. How did Humble Beast come to be? So uh, roughly three, maybe three and a half years ago, decided that um, I would start. Well, so Propaganda and I've been friends for over 15 years. Okay. Uh, and so prior to running Humble Beast, I ran a multimedia company. Uh, where I did branding uh, and development for nonprofits and uh, record companies. And so uh, Propaganda was al always asking me, man, just do for me what you're doing for other people. And so that kind of put the bug in my ear. So kind of thought about it, prayed about it for about a good year and a half, and then decided, okay, I'm going to try to pioneer this thing with the emphasis being discipleship and um having a medium where I could bring other dudes kind of into this camp where we could begin to disciple, train, equip, uh, and music being the medium that uh, allows for us to have a point of connection. And so when we started it, I just kind of grabbed all these folks in my immediate context and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make some music. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about life. We're going to talk about how to be better fathers, better husbands, um, better Christians, we're going to talk about how to uh, submit in your local church, all, all those things. And so what started off as kind of a small discipleship collective of folks ended up growing into a, a much more robust, functional record company. Um, and so, yeah, three years later, by God's grace, he's just uh, continued to bless and providentially um, open up doors for us. And so that's that's where we're at now. All right. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. We are that weekly radio show you hear right here on 99.3 KTIA. And, of course, at a rebelscause.com. Uh, we're that show. We tell you to read your Bibles, go to church, love Jesus, and forsake the world. A Rebels Cause Radio will be right back after the break. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at kittiesusa.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Give us a call. 
the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Don't just sit there. Get involved. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am your host, Dan Fry. Joining me in studio today, we've got Brian, the Weird Beard Puritan. Peters. Peters. <laughs> Thank Peters. you. I messed it. I, I got it the first time. That yeah, was pretty good. It's a tongue twister. I mean, yeah. I don't... Do... <laughs> so, so since I was getting mocked online for not having my vanity mic... Which is, of course, the Sure 55, the mic that Elvis used, the most recognizable mic in the world. Uh, and I'm using this crappy heel. Uh, I thought I, I'd go ahead and take the blazer off because I was getting mocked for that too. So, so now you're gonna I get, get mocked, mocked for, for having tattoos. I I cannot win. I, I this now is, you know how it feels to be me. <laughs> well, you don't. You, nobody mocks you for your tattoos. That's true. So, because you don't have any. That's true. Or your hair. Or your hair. Yeah, it is. It, it it's actually annoying how much my tattoos come up. It's like, what, what does this got to do with anything? I'm sorry, I have them. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. They're there. Uh, you should go get some extra ones just in case. Well, I'm getting some finished up because I don't like unfinished pieces of work on my arm. But uh, you know, the the real thing is like getting them removed ain't gonna happen either. I've seen the process, so no, thank you. So. Uh, <laughs> So I will be that tattooed freak of the man for the rest of my life, and I'm okay with that. And uh, I'm I'm pretty sure even if they were sinful when I got them, Jesus will forgive me for them. I mean, that's that's kind of my take on it. Now, I don't think you should go out and get tattoos and say, well, Jesus will forgive me. That's We're not trying to send so grace abounds, but I, I think we can make an argument for Christian liberty, and then I, we would have to say I'm definitely taking a gluttony of that liberty. Uh, I think we'd all agree there. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, now that we've got the whole fancy mic, blazer, hat turned around backwards thing, which is just turned around backwards so you can see my eyes. It's the only reason I turned you around. You do have amazing eyes. You know, th <laughs> these, guys, these guys on the chat, they are so demanding. If you didn't know this, on Thursday night, uh, we have a chat room uh, during the live taping of the show. You guys are welcome to listen Thursday night uh, and, and join in the chat. In fact, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's it's when all the fun stuff happens. It's when you get the second hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, the live second hour. Uh, we have a call-in number. If you have a question for our guests, you can call in. So if you're listening on uh, KTIA on Saturday, uh, you can't call in. But for those that are listening tonight, one eight five five two four four double o double seven. You can ask uh, Odd Thomas a question. If he doesn't like it, he'll just tell you no. Uh, that is our rule. He he has the right to say he does not want to answer a question. And we're not going to take it any further. Um, but, but that being said, we're, we're talking with Odd Thomas from Humble Beast. Now, if you guys haven't heard about Humble Beast, then, again, you haven't been following the show. You haven't been following me on Facebook. I love these guys. They're awesome. I mean, the, for me, here's, here's how I would best describe them. Thomas, close your ears. You might not like this. <laughs> they are a lot like Lamp Mode theologically, less theology stuffed into each song, but I like the music production a little better. So so it's a give and take. Like I like the theology level of lamp mode uh, cuz they just stuff so much into one song, but I like what these guys do with music musically better. Uh that's how I would describe them is they are the best they raised the bar on Christian Christian music. I, when uh when uh, Propaganda's new album came out, in fact I called up Ivy Connerly and said, "Man, you just got the bar raised on you. You better come with something hard." <laughs> and he said, "Oh, I got it." You know, and so he, you know, <laughs> he's working on his new stuff, and uh, we look forward to hearing that. Now, uh, uh, Thomas, do you got you got a new album coming out called "Instruments of Mercy"? Is that right? Yeah, Beautiful Eulogy has a new record that we're actually in the studio working on right now. It's called "Instruments of Mercy." Where'd you get the name from? What's what's the what's uh, obviously you can kind of figure out what that's about but can you give us kind of a brief overview of of what that what the the arc of that that uh yeah, album is going to be it's kind of wordplay both in that uh so beautiful eulogy we just we don't sample any anything we create all of the music on our own so we play keys guitars cellos xylophones and so uh, yeah so 
we don't sample anything. So we try to create on our own. So instruments, uh, and then obviously we're, we're all vessels, instruments of God's great mercy to us. And so the whole record is dealing with themes of God's mercy, um, our redemption through the person and work of Jesus Christ. So yeah, that's, it's kind of two part. Wow. So you guys don't do any sampling at all. No sampling. I think, I think the, no, I think the sounds you guys make are fantastic. Really rich. Thank you, brother. Thank you. John's a little bit of a music guy. Yeah. I think he's pretty talented. He'll tell you he's not, but he, yes, he definitely he enjoys music. He does. Um, now you guys, uh, you guys have a, on your beautiful usually song, I think it's, is it track 10, the best friend? I have yeah. listened to that song like a thousand times. I cannot understand exactly what that song's about. Can you can you can you explain that song to me? Yeah, this song is called Motive One Two. Okay, it's basically just about checking your motives, and so it kind of sur- it's a broad survey of, um, you know the the people that just engage uh, with no substance, people that just want to be friends on Facebook, uh, but really have no. Um, investment uh, and it's just really us kind of poking around talking about accountability just being silly so we needed a song that transitions some of what we would consider like kind of weighty um, more uh, robust content songs and we just needed kind of a bridge to do something playful I mean we are we just we joke around all the time and so if you listen to the verse, we're talking about all these different coffee shops in Portland that we frequently visit. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I found out what Stumptown is because of that song. <laughs> Stumptown. So, yeah. So we, we don't have a Stumptown here because that's a Portland thing. We have Zanzibar's. I feel bad for you. You I know what? We, we've, we've got, got a ton of places, though. Yeah, we've got Zanzibar's Coffee Adventures. You have no idea how good it is over here. It is great. Um, well, every city we go to, we try to find the best coffee places. Yeah, so. well, if you're ever in Des Moines doing a show... Uh, first of all, you guys need to come here first, and I'll just buy the coffee at Zanzibar's for you because you, you know it's Sounds it's like a deal. They so, have an arcade at Java Joe's though. <laughs> Java Joe's is, they're they're you know that Java Joe's was the first place I ever performed live. I like Java Joe's. I, I appreciate they roast their own beans. Zanzibar is better. Just you guys want to know a secret? What's that? Any any coffee shop that has the word Java in it is not good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a, that, that's a, that's a good rule. Did I say about. Java Joe's? It's Coffee Joe's. Yeah, it's Coffee Joe's. <laughs> All right. So so we kind of talked a little bit about your upcoming projects. Um, what would you say is the 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 goal of your music ministry as a as a beautiful eulogy and as Humble Beast as a whole? Yeah. So for beautiful eulogy, um, we try to create a very worshipful record. Um, which in hip hop is it seems pretty hard to do because hip hop is just so ego driven and just very, you know, I don't know, just ego driven. And so we wanted to create something that was very worshipful where we could talk about uh, how great God is and how great his salvation is and the joy of knowing him, the joy of being in relationship with him and talk about his character and his nature and, and how it impacts the believer and how it, how it can potentially impact the unbeliever. And um, so we tried to create something that was very worshipful, especially for men. Um, We find that uh, it's sometimes very difficult for men to really engage in worship because a lot of contemporary worship is very, I don't know, feminine, I guess. And so hip hop creates a unique uh, place where men could actually worship with a, a sense of masculinity. And so that's what our goal was for beautiful eulogy truth about knowing God, knowing God rightly worshiping God. Um, yeah. And then just doing that as creative as we could possibly do it. Um, so that's for beautiful eulogy. And then if you were to look at humble beast as a whole, uh, basically all we want to try and do is make Jesus famous. That's at the end of the day. That's what we want to do. We want to, we want to help teach people who Jesus is. There's a lot of, um, horrible ideas of who God is. So we want to we want to combat those ideas. Uh, we want to talk about His goodness, bring Him glory, and, and hip hop is a is a medium where the culture learns their worldview from. So you know you have all these folks in the inner city and uh, really in the urban suburban context where they're learning what masculinity is um, from Jay Z and folks like that. And so we basically want to 
help them establish a proper biblical worldview. And so that's our aim. All right. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. We are that weekly radio show that teaches you. No, we don't teach you. We tell you. Go read your Bibles. Just actually read them. Go to a good church, a Bible-believing church, one that maybe speaks in an expository fashion. Love Jesus and forsake the world. We'll be right back after the break. You're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond. Everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! Yeah! Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. To save the day That means that Mighty Mouse is on the way Don't just sit there, get involved This is a Rebels Cause Radio That is right, don't just sit there, get involved Where did that even come from? That is, the, Chris makes the just the corniest bumpers for me So what he's saying is, get off your couch, drive to Des Moines Barge into the studio and, and get involved. Shove, out, shove us out of the way and take our Well, bikes. maybe he's just noticed that I just bring random homeless people in. That's how we got Brian and Luke. <laughs> and <laughs> so, I used to look like I was homeless, too. Well, you did when you first started coming, but it was a good look for you. It, yes. It's a triple chin thing. Do you might just, I know your new job pays you better to be uh, bald-faced, but maybe, maybe you should reconsider. No, I love it there. I'm uh, so happy there. Um, can, Can't can you, you like, grow a goatee? Maybe a little nope. mustache? I could grow a mustache. Maybe, maybe a mustache. It would look worse. Yeah, I think it would. I think it would look worse. Trust yeah, me. Why don't you just? Know. You know what? J just for that, I will. Oh, just, yeah. just get one of those fake beards and wear it to the show. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know what we got to do. You need your beard back. You might get fired. I don't. I don't know if we can have employees without beards. Everybody else has facial hair, Luke, <laughs> except Ryan, who's I think too young to grow facial hair. He's more. He's I, more. I, more I, oh, I just got him on the mic. Uh, I can grow facial hair. <laughs> what do you got? But like three? I work at a grocery store that makes me shave it every week. <sighs> but you guys do have but good meat. I can still get facial hair. I do like the the, the meat that Fairway sells. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, How you, can you never bring any of that meat in, Ryan? This it, this is just going expensive. bad quickly. All right, so we're talking with the Odd Thomas. We just wasted like three minutes of paid radio time so we could talk about facial, fa hair. facial hair and how, how good the stakes are over at uh, Fairway. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving right along, uh, we are talking with Odd Thomas from Humble Beast, and uh, I want I kind of wanted to get in, like a view from you of what you see when you look out into the uh, Christian contemporary music or contemporary Christian music, however you want to word that, and, and maybe even the Christian rap rap scene right now. What are, what are you seeing? What's your general perception of it? Well, overall, I'm, I'm really encouraged by it. I think that um, anytime uh, folks are elevating the name of Jesus in music, I think that's great. You know, um, it's like, uh, you know, when folks preach for, with the wrong motives, you know, it's, it's still a good thing. 
you know, like the, at least the gospel's being preached. And so I'm, I'm very encouraged by it. I look at folks like Lecrae and Reach Records and their, um, their influence in the culture, I think is awesome, you know, uh, and, and I respect and love what they do. And then I, I look at folks like Lamp Mode. Uh, again, they're, they're friends of ours and I love and respect what they do. I think that they're doing, they're, they're doing a unique thing um, in the culture. They're helping people to understand God rightly. And I think, uh, so when I look at the kind of like two different worlds, like as Shylin puts it, music from the church and music for the church, I, I'm, I'm very encouraged by it. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I am kind of jealous you guys are on first name basis with Shy Lin. The, I, I, I mean, that's his, I mean, you're on a first name basis with Shy. Well, I, I know that's his name, but he's actually never <laughs> spoken to me. Now, Timothy Brindle, we had on the show. Timothy's a great guy, which I really enjoyed the show. But, but we, Shy actually said he wasn't given interviews at the time when we tried to get a hold of him. So, yeah, so he doesn't do many interviews. Yeah, and I, you know what? I understand uh, radio, uh, Christian radio. A lot of it, kind of like parts of Christian music. A lot of it's pretty bad, and uh, it's going to get used against you. And that's that's not the we're not the aha show. Uh, we're not trying to be the police of a theology either. Uh, we're just a bunch of guys that wanted to talk about Christ and uh, decided to do it in front of microphones because we had the opportunity. Um, but yeah, so Shylin's kind of a hero to John and I. We uh, we actually uh, when we discovered Shylin, I, I think we just destroyed the albums we had. I wore mine out. Like I've never seen a CD get played so much. Period. Yeah. I was gonna say, did you break the needle on your turntable with it? No, just <laughs> just the CD. I, I just played it so many times. I, I have burned that CD from the original uh, download that I bought from it, probably twenty times. You know, I'll say, I will say this: uh, discovering Shylin for me was nothing short of paradigmatic. Paradigmatic. And what does that mean? <laughs> Thank you, Luke. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why I'm here. Paradigm shift. It kind of changes my, changed my whole outlook on on. The then thing. why didn't you say that? Yeah, because paradigmatic sounds much cooler. Yeah, oh my no, gosh. it sounds really horrible. No, I I definitely Shylin prepared me to be excited about. God. I would have never have li- tried to listen to Christian rap. I would have missed beautiful eulogy if Shylin hadn't shown me hip hop can be done well. Well, I'll say th- I'll say this, and I I would I would say the same thing about. Uh, um, Humble Beast, as I would say about Lamp Mode, but just using Shylin as the kind of the the example. Um, <clears throat> it for me was both the redemption of and condemnation of contemporary Christian music. Redemption in that it shows that it can be done biblically, richly, deeply, and condemnation in that it's not hardly anywhere. You know, um, that that's been my experience. I mean, you know, I come from a background of I lift your name on high and I lift it really lift it, so we're lifting it because we're going to lift it up. You know. Yeah. Well, notice you said you said, "What's my perspective on Christian hip hop, not contemporary Christian music?" Well, we actually did ask both. Yeah, I asked both. Okay, so I didn't hear you say contemporary <laughs> Christian music. Yeah, contemporary so, Christian music. There is very little contemporary Christian music that I that I actually will listen to. I, I think that 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 they need a reformation. I, I agree. Amen. That's, <laughs> I'm not even a rap fan, but I don't like secular music anymore. I've just kind of. The very few bands excite me at all, um, secularly. And so I, I go to Christian music and I can't get excited about anything other than rap. So I've been yeah. stuck I've been stuck in hip hop because it's the only thing that feeds me what I want to be fed. It's not fair to say that there's nothing good out there, but it's like Name one, one good Christian uh, uh, regular Christian album that's not rap. One. Josh well, Carroll's well I could tell you a few. Okay. So page one sixteen, really good. Ascend the Hill, really good. Uh, these are good these are good folks, okay. you know, but they're, they're very, it's a very small collective of good contemporary Christian music. I'll have to write those Probably down because I've, I've never heard of either one of those. I'm guessing maybe Page 1%. Page CXVI, um, really good. You would, enri- you would really enjoy them. They do more contemporary hymns. It's really good. Sure. Ascend <clears throat> but, the Hill. Uh, actually, uh, Ascend the Hill was on Propaganda's record in the, on the song Lofty. Oh, so. okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, are you guys going to expand outside uh, of hip hop ever? We're kind of already doing that a little bit. Uh, I would say that Beautiful Eulogy is probably... Yeah, you can't really say that's hip-hop. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, it's a little bit more kind of folky hip-hop, I guess. Uh, But we would love to do that. It's just a matter of resources and and money. We give everything away for free, so... That is problematic. And you can get that all at HumbleBeast.com, right? You can download your your albums for everything. And uh, you guys have a store there if you do want to support them. Uh, buy a shirt, 
I would say buy the t-shirt or buy the CD too. They, they sell them in, on Amazon and on iTunes. Uh, you know, guys, uh, and Thomas, thank you for so much for coming on, uh, coming on the show. Uh, we're, we're, we're at the end. We killed an hour with Odd Thomas. This is, this is what I love about the job. I get to meet people that I would never, ever get to meet in any mm-hmm. other life. And, and then ask some questions and grill them on stuff like gun control. It's it's a blast. <laughs> and the Puritans. Yeah, and the Puritans. So we're this, you know, we're just this show. We're this show that wants you to read your Bible. That's what we encourage you to do. Go out and read it. Read commentaries about it. Try to understand it. Try memorizing it. Heck, that's that's good. Bible memorization is awesome. We want you to go to church. A Bible-believing church, one that teaches the entire counsel of God, doesn't conveniently skip over things. You know, doesn't go, oh, we don't like this word. We're not going to explain it to you. Entire counsel of God. And of course, we want you to love Jesus. The Bible is centered around the life of Christ. It is simple, centered around the sacrifice of Christ. It is centered around the fact that that man, God, is our Savior. Love that man. And of course... Forsake the world. The Rebels Cause Radio. Until next week, this is it. Late owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. (laughs) Keep going, though. I like this. (laughs) Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Uzi's right at all those non-tithing members because we want God to come to church and at the count of three Jesuses we shoot them all dead. Say what? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world dome. <laughs> Say what again? Say what again? What? <laughs> I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God, but I believe there are many paths to Jesus. Oh,
That don't make no sense. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense, sir. <laughs> Evidently, Mr. Ringo's an educated man. How I really hate him. You know what happens when you compromise and men finally get an opportunity to preach the gospel? Having compromised and sinned against God, you know what? If you preach the gospel, even if you compromise and get an opportunity to eventually preach the gospel, some are going to mock you. Some will hear you further and some will believe. You know what happens when you don't compromise and God opens an opportunity for you to preach the gospel? Some will mock you. Some will listen to you further and some will believe. So why bother compromising? in the first place. Welcome back to the second hour of A Rebel's Cause Radio with your host, that tattooed freak of a man, Dan Fry. Ha ha, you missed it, John, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. This is A Rebel's Cause Radio, second hour web only. Uh, we're, uh, we're carrying on the conversation. Normally, the, the big time guests, y- you do the hour with them, they're like, oh man, that was really long. I don't want to do any more. Uh, that, that's enough. This guy blocked off extra time so he could do it. So he's sitting in the studio. In the studio? In the studio. That's where he's at. Not our studio. In his, the interview lot. His, his the studio. recording studio. Yeah, he's at the Humblebee Studios. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Humblebee's world headquarters, if you will. <laughs> Worldwide. Uh, Worldwide. Yeah. Worldwide. <laughs> Thanks for the fake echo. Uh, and uh, he is... Uh, Going to join us for the theological side of the debate, or uh, not debate, but a conversation. Uh, we were going to kind of transition back into a little bit more of the textual criticism stuff. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that. I don't. I don't okay. really want to. We uh, we are going to try to get uh, Daniel B. Wallace on, who we reached out to. Uh, he's he's the guy apparently for the uh, eclectic side. So. So we're looking forward to that. Brian, on the other hand, has already said that he's gonna he's gonna call him a heretic right out the bat, so that uh, he can't get off uh, on a good yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah. So that so that so that the guy's off off uh, <laughs> off kilter, so that he doesn't get destroyed in an argument. So uh, I say I say before he can, we call him a heretic. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the, 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 what we'll do is we'll bring in the burning wood pile and put it behind Brian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan, can you get a graphic? Can yeah, you get a yeah, graphic for Ryan like, with the burning wood yeah, pile we, behind him? Do we use our green screen and get a, a burning wood pile behind Brian? And then green we don't screen? Have... This, this isn't a green screen. This is real. Uh, no, it's a green screen. You know, at some point, hopefully, uh, we'll uh, have an, our own green screen background and not have the generic one. Uh, I think Spooner was working on something like that for us. Oh, that's but, awesome. Uh so anyway, so this guy that I've just wasted another three minutes of his time, that's time he's not going to get back, folks. Of his life, he'll yeah, never get back. He'll just never get back, never get back. Uh, decided to stay on for, for the conversation. So Brian, actually, uh, you were recently introduced to them, right? This is through, right. uh, through this yeah. radio show. You were like, oh, uh, but you formulated some questions that you wanted to throw at, at Odd Thomas. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of turn the show over to you for those couple oh, questions. Great. Okay. Now, no pressure at all. <laughs> no pressure. You know, I mean, forget about all the ratings. Sure. You know, don't think about it as like 9,000 people listen per episode. Okay. That would be bad. All right. It's, it's only like you're going to lose like 4,000 if you mess and this you up know, anyway, it's, right? it's no big deal. I mean, we know it's your third episode as a member of the cast. So we're just going to go down the street, you know, get a, get you something know, to drink. If oh, we leave the deep. studio with you, you'll be fine. Luke's a, a seasoned pro, very well spoken man. Very well spoken. <laughs> You'll I just be fine. To say I hate you all <laughs> in Christian love. Okay, so yes. so go ahead, uh, Brian. Okay, so I I hadn't heard you before. I enjoyed what I heard, and then I looked up the lyrics and I understood them even a little bit more. And I really enjoyed what I read. What do people? How do people react when you're when you're rapping about? Oh, a legal declaration by God that we've been made right in his sight? Uh, well, I mean, it's, that's biblical, right? Sure. So, <laughs> I mean, hopefully, but, but no, they, I mean, you're at a, you're at a coffee a biblical shop, worldview, right? They, they, they read that and say, oh, this is, this is biblical. Um, but no, I think, I think a lot of people view it as just poetic. And, um, and I, I think that the scripture is very poetic in certain parts and cer- certain parts of his genre. So, yeah. Now, are your are your audiences at the at coffee shops and venues where they perform? Are they going to be areas where uh, are you mainly performing for? They Christians don't perform or? at coffee shops. They're like a real like they have they have big concerts. Okay, like they were at South by Southwest by Southwest, big big time. But 
go with your cute little coffee shop. Okay, it's okay. okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to picture. So are these, are, how, do, how does a non-Christian react when you're performing afterwards? Yeah. So what we try to do is after every show we do, make ourselves available to, to talk. And we, uh, most shows we do, we, we try and give a gospel presentation after the music, hmm. um, make ourselves available, talk worldview, um, just kind of make ourselves open and available. And that usually creates amazing, um, authentic conversations where some people might hear certain things in the songs and then ask a question, well, like, well, how do you know that God is real? Or uh, you make a lot of claims about this or that. And um, it usually ends up being a really awesome, uh, intimate conversation. And so that's our, hmm. that's our objective when we actually do shows. I, I think some folks think we, we just kind of go and our, our goal is to, you know, do a good performance. And that's part of it. But at the end of the day, we want to engage people. Uh, we want to be able to answer questions to the believer and the non-believer. And so hmm. even when we write, we try to write in such a way where it's, it can edify the saints and also stimulate and, uh, and raise questions for the non-believer. Hmm. So when you, I guess uh, maybe this is kind of piggybacking on yours, Brian, mm-hmm. but, but you have one song. I was, I was showing John today because John was like, well, what? Give me a good example uh, of what you're so excited about on these guys, and and so I took them uh, to this to the song, and I'm trying to think what it's called now. I'm trying to think which track it is, uh, but it, but it talks about the uh, string one, yeah, the yeah. the kite string, yeah. What well, and it and it and it plays into a uh, well predestination. It, it, mm. It's it, you know you're basically laying out what predestination is. How do you do the people that don't believe in predestination do they react poorly to that stuff i mean do you get a lot of feedback from people that would say they're christians but don't really understand uh you know sovereignty of god and predestination and stuff like that yeah i would say that the the response is never negative um some people might not agree but i think that um the art it tends to be the sugar that helps the medicine go down okay and so it it just creates a, a an environment where they ask questions not opposed to it, just want us to articulate our view, our perspective of it. Normally we get that conversation, but what about free will or um, those types of things? And so, um, but it's never negative. It's never that people are hostile towards what we're saying. Even the unbelievers never really hostile. Wow. I think they appreciate the artistry of it the same way someone can appreciate any art. Um, but it just provokes good, genuine questions. That's awesome because you know the one one of the worst things about being in talk radio, and I do another radio show, so every day I get surrounded by a, a different pastor from a different church here in town every day, and then they the host likes to pit me against them because I'm a Calvinist, <laughs> uh, and so every day I just get this hostile <laughs> free will stuff. Now, how do you explain uh, the free will? You know, somebody says, well, "What about free will?" What do you say to that person? Yeah, I mean, it's just. Uh... So let me say this first. We, when we make music and when we do shows, we don't, uh, we're not like, we're not like the card carrying Calvinist. Sure. Right. That's okay. So at, at the end of the day, we're not going to, we're not going to argue over Calvinism. Um, we're going to just talk Bible. And so we're going to, we're going to be ecumenical to the point where, and, and uh, I say ecumenical, but, not in the way that you guys probably would would view that, but we just try to eliminate like um, you know denominational things. We th- we don't talk about being reformed. We don't talk about being Calvinists or anything like that. We just we just chop it up and be very practical with them. So if someone uh, brings up the issue of free will, we we just show how that's in, you know it's not compatible with the God who is sovereign. And if the scriptures say that God is sovereign over thing over all things, then uh, you can't possibly have free will because if you have free will, then that means your will could dominate God's authority. And, you know, just just try to be super practical, but at the same time, very sweet about it. I mean, at the end of the day, my objective is to, is to not raise a culture of Calvinists, uh, but sure. Bible-believing Christians. And so, well, and, I, if, if, and, I, I, and I, I, we sniff them out, too. Like, there are some dudes that I think— um, that kind of wait by the table. And I know that right when we start talking, they're going to want to chop up theology and uh, they're just, they have their Calvinist card in their pocket and they're like, okay, let's just get to town on it. And and we kind of see that. Sure. Um, and we just kind of dodge those conversations and we try to talk about the Bible. 
you know, talk about how good God is and yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm a Calvinist, but I like to call myself a reluctant Calvinist. I don't really <laughs> like to bring Calvinism into the conversation because I yeah. find that it's a, it's, it's a conversation a stopper. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 you know, people are offended by it. And, and it's actually what I hate about, you know, when this host that, that I work with brings up that I'm a Calvinist, it, it kind of, the, the, the conversation suddenly swings towards these doctrines of Calvin. And I'm like, look, I'm not trying to get you to understand what Calvin said. I'm trying to pr- uh, pull out of the Bible. Now, I may agree with Calvin. I may have even gone to that set of scriptures because I know what Calvin said, and I, and, and I found him to be right. But I, I don't think that we have to... I don't like to call myself a Calvinist. Now, I probably am, yeah. but that's okay. I also read Luther. I got bondage of the will, right? It's it's my. I got three weeks off seminary uh, for a spring summer break type thing, and I, I'm going to read bondage of the will. So I'm not solely informed in Calvinism, or you know, like I, to me, I don't think that's a big deal. I actually like that you guys uh, dodge that label uh, and still preach a biblical message. Well, and. I know we've had this conversation too, Dan. It's been a while, but I'm less hesitant and less reluctant to identify myself as a Calvinist um, than you are. But I, it also seems like it comes up less in my dialogue with people than it does with, in your dialogue. I, I just again, I deal with every day. I come here and I sit behind the board where Ryan's at right now. I know, but even and, in our and, conversations, and, and, and Matt and stuff. goes, "He's a Calvinist." Get him! And, and, and I'm just like, sick him. You know, well, literally, he called me. He called me. He called me into the. Uh, into the studio uh, the other day and said, hey, your name came up in a conversation. I said, oh, yeah, well, all good, I suppose, right? He was, <laughs> he's like, well, we were talking about Calvinism, and uh, I got I got uh, Pastor Richard from Church of Hope to come in to talk to you about it. And I'm like, is he going to set me straight on it? You know? And he's like, yeah, he, he's got you. And I'm like, you do realize that I was raised in a Lutheran school, and Lutherans don't think about Calvinism and the five points, and so they wouldn't call themselves Calvinists, but we would agree on the point, we would agree on what it means of to be have a sovereign God and some of the things that are more important to me than the five points of Calvinism. First of all, Calvin didn't set up the five points. That's true. You know, that's not something Calvin did. So, so it's interesting. I, I, I think it's funny though, that you jumped right away into the, well, we're not Calvinists because that means that you get a lot of people, I think that bring that name up to you. Um, yeah. Well, it, if, if someone asks me, if someone says, would you identify yourself as a Calvinist? I'm not going to say no. I mean, I'm going to be honest with them. Sure. But I just don't carry the banner. Sure. You know, right. Wear the Calvin t-shirt or, right. or whatever. I wear the Humble Beast t-shirt because I feel that tells people I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's that's my lie. You know, I actually, one of the reasons, you know, we kind of going back to that, that Precious Puritan thing. One of the reasons I like this sh- the shirt is because I actually think we have men today that have interpreted Scripture as well as those Puritan guys, and are as worthy of being quoted or read for knowledge and stuff like that. And so it doesn't bother me that we, we start to move past that, especially if some people are offended. Now, Brian right now is Brian offended. Brian's totally rigid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian rigid is like, oh, but you can't. And and I read the Puritans. You know I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I like them. I find them delightful. I even read uh, post-Puritans like uh, you know Spurgeon, who I think actually is kind of dim-witted. But I, I know people hate I call Sturgeon. He's not that... In the spectrum of Puritans, he's not the guy. I don't know why everybody... He's a bumper sticker guy. Him and J.C. Rowell, they're quotable. Um, and uh, take the conversation back a few steps. Um, I, I do agree. I, I'm, t- I'm totally a Reformed guy. I'm totally a Calvinist. But I, I agree that that's not where you lead off with, hi, I'm John, I'm a Calvinist, you know, and let's talk about it. Is you just, the thing is, and, and the thing is, you know, you get your Arminian buster shirt on and then they yeah. know you're not an Arminian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, but you guys, you guys expound biblical doctrine, which would uh, agree with the doctrines of grace. And anyone who's, anyone who knows anything about it, when they hear your songs, they're going to get your affiliation. You know what I mean? That's, you don't have to come right out and say it because, uh, Calvinism has become an ugly buzzword, you know, and as soon as you say, as soon as it comes out, it's like, ooh. So I think the way you guys are handling it is very well. Yeah, thank you. The, the, the Calvinists know that we're Calvinists. Yes, yes. Um, the people who, <laughs> and, and two, you have to think like context drives a lot of what we do. So we 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 live and and function in a context that really doesn't even consider issues like Calvinism or Arminianism or anything like that. They just they have a a poor understanding of doctrine in general. 
sure. a, a poor understanding of the Bible. Half these dudes don't even read their Bible. That's the so, that's the background true. I came out of. So speaking of, of a poor uh, poor understanding of doctrine, did I see you guys on TBN? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what were you doing on TBN? <laughs> Evangelism. <laughs> They, you know, they, uh, they, they, they were, they were gracious. They actually it was CBN. CBN, sorry, TBN, okay. CBN. Yeah, seven hundred club. Sure. Yeah. Um, so they were gracious to take interest in what we were doing in terms of our mission statement, our philosophy of ministry. Um, our, uh, we're very outspoken about support for the local church, and so they, they basically just hit us up and said, "Hey, can we interview you? We find it very interesting that you guys do hip hop and you guys squeeze this theology and your songs and stuff." And so we took that as a providential opportunity to talk about the goodness of God, talk about His grace and kindness and mercy. And I watched so, the interview. You guys did great. I I was just surprised they aired it. To be honest, I mean, it, yeah. well, I, praise be to God, man. Yeah, that's, no. I think that's the cool thing about holding to our theological distinctions in the songs that we write, but being ecumenical, being willing to hold hands with folks that don't necessarily hold to our theological distinctives. Um, I mean, we would disagree with a lot of folks, but, you know, we'll hold hands with a, with a, with a dude who's a Pentecostal, charismatic dude, uh, Arminian dude, as long as, they, as long as they are incredibly zealous about Jesus and the gospel, we ride with those dudes. Sure. You know, we now, want to do ministry with these guys. Now, you, when you men- I mentioned Pentecostal, though, uh, that that's the one one church that. I, I, what about the oneness guys? The guys that, that don't believe in an uh, in a uh, a trinity. So talking about like the TDJ. Uh, when I say Pentecostal, I, I would probably say like um, four square assemblies of God, th- things of that nature. One is Pentecostal. I think I would have a lot of differences of opinions with. Um, so I, I don't say that universally. Okay. Right? Yeah, I just not, I just oh, want everything is all good, but sure. there are things that I can find. So if somebody believes, I mean, I don't necessarily, um, you know, speaking in tongues ain't my it's not my thing, right? Sure. Um, but if a dude speaks in tongues and, and is zealous about Jesus, then I'll just be like, okay, it's cool. You, that's that's your thing, and uh, we we have a common love and affection for Jesus. Let's let's build. Sure. Well, and Usually, that, out of building relationship or talking to folks, we get to um, we get to talk about these these theological differences, and and I try to use the scripture to support mine, and um, it ends up being a really cool conversation. Sure. Well, and I and, and I definitely appreciate that, and I wasn't trying to put you necessarily on the spot. I just wondered if you had an opinion because that I actually I kind of felt the same. I'm like, oh, whatever. I don't really care what they are. And then I found out about I I met a oneness guy and. We were saying a lot of the same things. I was kind of really excited, and then I realized we're not saying the same things at all. And, yeah, you have to define your terms first mm-hmm. off, and then decide whether it's yeah, guys agree. and mm-hmm. that and that that becomes hard. Now, if I can, uh, there's there's a fellow in the chats that's wanting me to get a question to you, uh, Thomas. Sure. What are your thoughts on the regulative principle of worship? <laughs> Benji? No, not Benji. Not it's Benji. not Benji. Not oh. Benji. It's uh, Darren. Uh, why are we? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I made a promise. I had to keep it. You, you can happy. say no to this one. I'm just. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, folks that are you know regulative or normative, what, whatever. The, it, it doesn't. If that's your bag, that's your bag. I don't agree with it. I think that. Um, um, I, I find enough support in Scripture uh, to worship God with the guitar, with the uh, drums, with new songs, things of that nature. So, um, yeah, I don't know that. I, mean, I don't know that any of that necessarily uh, defeats regular principle, though. I mean, because regular principle, it, see, and this is John. I think this is a great talking pass point. When you say regular principle, you mean something I different than I, I do. didn't put any terms into it at all. Yeah, yeah, no, I know right. you didn't, but I, I'm saying in two guys sit down and say regular principle, it means different things, because I don't think the regular principle, to me, uh, takes out the guitars and the drums and stuff like that. But to Brian, it definitely does, right? Right. Well, okay. And no, to John, to re- well, pretty much does, Well, no, right? no, no, no. I, I have a problem with uh, contemporary worship uh, as it's called in in church services, but it's not primarily. It's it's from an extension of the regulative principle. I don't. I can't dismiss a guitar on regulative grounds. Sure. I dismiss performances on regulative grounds, and then I extrapolate that back to to, to praise. So, and worship so all and you got to do is, is, as long as it's uh, it's assisting the saints singing, it's good, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, but okay. see, the regular, regular, and uh, regular people and normative people would argue would both have the argument about whether or not there should be a praise band. Uh, that to be regular doesn't escape that doesn't escape that debate. It reframes it for a normative guy. The debate would be. Um, what do we want? Be- what do we want more? What do we think will benefit us best? You know, what what do the people want? For for a, a, norm, a regulative guy is, do we'll we have regular do we have regulative grounds for this? I mean, because regular right. principle is, uh, regular principle is if God commands it, do it. If God forbids it, don't do it. And if there's no word on it, don't do it. Uh, so the debate is the debate's not settled there. The debate becomes, do we have biblical grounds to well, do this? The, the problem. Yeah, I think the question too is, do, does God accept our worship? if it's not done in this regulated form, right? And so I, I think that God does accept our worship. I, I think he does. I think um, David rocked the tambourine. David sang new songs. You know, I, I think that God does accept our worship. And I find enough biblical support to, to validate someone can play a guitar in a church and someone can play uh, an organ or, or whatever the case may be. So- I, I think to, to say that God would dismiss our worship because it's not done in a, in a structured way. Uh, I just, I just don't see that. So you would say generally, if you're offering something as worship and it's not prohibited or forbidden in scripture, that it would be legitimate. Yeah. That's okay. That's normative. Yeah. Okay. Well, and again, but but I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock a dude that holds to the convictions of regular principle. Sure. You know, if, that's yeah. your, if that's your conviction, so be it. All good. You know, like we're, that's cool. We're all friendly here. We can. We we've all <laughs> already agreed to disagree on various. You know, because what's yeah. funny about it is, uh, we're all the th- three main guys here are all Presbyterians in various stages and very in different denominations of Presbyterianism. So so Brian, the guy with the goatee, he he is from the uh, Reformed Presbyterian Pres- Presbyterian Reform. Reform sorry, yeah. <laughs> PRC. Uh, John is from the Orthodox Presbyterian, and then of course I, I'm a Presbyterian Church of America, and so so we've got we've got three different forms of us, and we we don't agree on stuff, and so we've just that's part of this show <laughs> is is you're you're free to have your opinion, and we're not going to try to kill you on it. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what it is, and and obviously if we saw you know if you saw something horrible with us or, or vice versa. We, we would question you further at it, but th- this, this isn't the place. It's not, I mean, no one's trying to pick a fight. You yeah, know? We're, this, um, yeah, yeah, this, no, this good, isn't the place for the fight, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's all good. I was just saying, like, yeah, uh, my, my perspective just tends to be like, yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if you hold to that conviction, yeah. all good. If you don't, all good. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you guys are picking a fight. So you used some language earlier. Do you make, you used language about men worshiping through, uh, through your hip hop. Is that something that, you see kind of a continuum what you're doing as almost being a worship leader in some context, or do you, do you see what you're doing as being separate from the worship of the church? Yeah. So I, hmm, this, this is a good question. So when we go out and we do music, right, we, we are in an environment that's different from a local church gathering, Mm -hmm. right? So my convictions as it pertains to like a, a church service, a worship service, right? Mm-hmm. I would, I would probably not, uh, I mean, I definitely would not be an advocate of someone getting up and doing rap songs in the middle of a, of a worship service. Right. I think that there, there's a, there's a structure for the worship service. Um, and I don't think that hip hop works in, in, in context or, or outside of the hip hop context. I don't think it works in a, in a church that doesn't understand the context. They wouldn't even know how to worship. You know, they don't understand the music. They don't understand the language. It's like, you know, speaking Greek to them. They're like, what? I, I don't get it. <laughs> so I don't think it would be profitable in that sense. Hmm. But when we do shows in different venues and folks understand the context, they know the music because they've been listening to the CDs and they hear these truths about God and they become so overwhelmed with the nature and character and love of God that they sing the songs with us and their hands are raised at that moment, it becomes worship. You know, they're worshiping with us when we're declaring God's truth of who he is, we're giving it back to God in in worship. And so I I think that there's different contexts for it. Well, in a a worship service, you know, I I mean, our church is very liturgical. You know, we have call to worship part, pardon and confession, the preaching of the word and then the table. And so I, you know, there's been times when I've done spoken word at, at the call to worship, um, but once the once the call to worship starts, it's it's pretty solid. You know, and I, I would kind of hold to that perspective. 
Well, there is a distinction to be made between corporate worship and and uh, uh, ed, uh, things at large, things you do at large. I mean, we're regulative principle guys, but we we think that applies to corporate worship. I don't have any regulative problems with. Okay, you're uh, running up on break, John. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. We are, of course, that show that tells you to go read your Bible, actually know what it says. Go to church, love Jesus, forsake the world, and stay right there because we'll be right back after this short break. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Max Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Sit there, get involved. This is our Rebels Cause Radio. Ah, uh, you can't see the crane hands. I'm trying to do the crane hands. You Let's look see. ridiculous. <laughs> well, I look ridiculous most days. Got a clown suit. That was suit extra on. ridiculous. I'm fat and got a clown suit on. I don't tell you, okay? Clown suit. So, so anyway, uh, coming back into the conversation john i, I had to rudely interrupt you because you we're had, coming up you did rudely interrupt me. I, I, I i just cut you off basically i just stabbed you in the back and beat you up a little bit again and who now who was called judas <laughs> well i i think me more is a uh, brutus but that's okay at two at two bluto <laughs> yeah so but that's okay okay so you want me to kind of go back to where you I, you, you can you can now i don't particularly want you to i the regulator <laughs> principle to me is the most boring topic because we all define the regulative principle as something different. So, right, the, who would want to talk about how God wants us to worship? Him? Well, that just uh, oh, 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 come I like that. now. I like that. The that problem, is. Brian, we're having is that even in this room now, now Odd Thomas is is kind of a sounds like he's supportive of the normative principle, but even a, the three of us that would go to churches that support the regulative principle, we have different definitions no, no. as to what they. We don't have different right. definitions. We have different applications. No, I'd say we have different understandings. Okay, define regulative principle. Exactly. 
one I, of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So back to the thing. Um, uh, one thing, one, back, uh, to the thing. back to the thing. So, so Thomas, one thing I want to make clear is, as a regulative principle guy is um, we don't view, we're normative when it comes to our lives outside of corporate The chat's worship. agreeing with me, just so you know. Um, you know, so you like, idiots. so your normative principles, if it's, well, Brian laid it out, if it's not command, if it's commanded, do it. If it's forbidden, don't do it. If it's up in the air, it's up to you. We're normative when it comes to daily life, when it comes to what we do with our vocations, when it comes to sure. all that stuff. We're only regulative when it comes to corporate worship. Which I don't understand. Okay. Yeah. So what exactly is regulative? Regulative I, principle is basically if the Bible, in the context of worship, if the Bible says this is to be done, like the Lord's Supper, mm-hmm. you do it, which John's church violates every week by not doing it weekly. <laughs> okay. 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 It, it, that's, a, that's more of a... That's no, a that's... I'm sorry, John. That's... Do this and remember me. Uh, whenever two or more of you gathered, I... We, no, you, no, you're mixing uh, verses now. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, it, I think it's time for the, the yeah. other... I think it's time for church discipline because that's what the, where two, of you, two or more gathered together is really all about. Yeah, well, that's fine, but the, you're, 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 you're not doing it correctly, so that's okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Quarterly is not enough. Um, so it's, if God says do it right, mm-hmm. you do it. If God says uh, this is forbidden, obviously even the normative guys would not try to induce that. Right. If the Bible is silent on it, then you also treat it as if it forbade it, because it would be better not to do something unintentionally that God didn't want you to do. So it's just better not to. Now, see that you just defined it the way that Brian and I would define. It. So we I, all define I, it the same. But, so that, <laughs> but, but see, here's the problem: is when, but when I say regular the principle. I don't think there's any problem with having stringed instruments. Okay, and drums that's not or, definition. That's application. Okay, we define app, it the same. Fine. We apply we, we, it we, different. We apply it different. <laughs> I don't think that it's a problem to have a praise band. I do think, though, it's a problem to have a praise band that performs. So if the praise band is there leading and assisting in worship, I'm good with it. You know, if you're singing right along with them, it doesn't bother me. Now, I see some validity personally in putting those things kind of out of sight. You know, I think they're great, but I don't know that we need to have them on stage because somebody might wrongly and in their own sinful motive focus on those people, even though that's not the point. But even Joel Beakey will concede a choir, which I think choirs are heretical. A choir, the choir. Uh, I I think if you're gonna if you're gonna throw out praise bands, then you have to say choirs are wrong too. I I'll agree. <laughs> See. See, so, so maybe you're right, John. Our application is different. How we would apply the regulative principle, how we understand what's forbidden. How we, the difference is application, not definition. We're yeah. united in definition. I don't actually think choirs are heretical. I just think that uh, if you're not singing alongside the choir, that that for me is problematic. I'm not going to throw around big words like heresy. I'm just going to say that... Um, I like the word heresy. If you just call everybody a heretic, eventually people <laughs> quit listening to you. Which is exactly what we're trying to do with the show here, Dan. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> it would take a lot of pressure off me if we didn't have people listening. I'm just saying. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so, so what we're basically saying is that everyone is on board with what Odd Thomas and Beautiful Eulogy are doing. Some of us, more than others, might have a problem if it were to be conceived of in terms specifically of worship. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I don't, I don't have a problem that worship exists outside the church walls, that it's a form of worship, but it's not church worship. There, there's a different, I would draw a difference between what you do inside of a church as part of your, your, your Lord's Day worship and everything, what, everything we and what do you do be, on a Saturday night with beautiful eulogy. They're two different types of worship. Yeah. Everything we do should be in a spirit of uh, private worship. See, I told you you may not want to stick around for these, these conversations. <laughs> you know, the other, like two weeks ago, we, we started talking about infralapsarianism versus superlapsarianism. That was Dan's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, if you want to address that, feel free, Thomas. That's, that's all you. Well, how about yeah. this? <laughs> uh, apparently, he believes in the imputation of Christ's righteousness, which I don't, I'm not familiar with uh, that being a normal topic for hip hop songs. I think, no, that's a great point. I think it's fantastic what, what Humble Beast and Lamp Mode does. You guys sc- just squeeze so much theology into those songs. I mean, uh, there's, that's basically a catechism, you know, um, well, the stuff that you guys Lamp do. Mode literally. I know. I know. I, in fact, in, in his new, in, in Shylin's new CD, he, he answers like, I, I think I heard like the uh, verbatim, the chief in demand is to glorify God and enjoy him forever in the new CD. I'm not positive though. So. 
So shorter with the, catechism question cards. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We brought the shorter catechism to play trivia if uh, the second hour got really boring. <laughs> so, so the imputation and stuff like that. Do you you guys don't get any questions about what some of these words mean that you're saying? I mean, we do, but it's usually um, conversational pieces, and it's not. It's like I said earlier. It's it's usually never hostile. I, I mean, I just remember we were in Texas a, a little while ago. Sure. We were at a show and some seminary students came up to us and started talking to us and basically asking like about predestination. They were asking about Calvinism. They were they're very sweet guys, though. I mean, really nice. Weren't like um, they weren't like ready to pick a fight, but they just had some genuine questions. And so we just kind of went through one of our songs and said, OK, so what is it that you object to? And then as they began to raise some objections, we said, OK, what? So here's here's where we can find this in the scriptures. So let's unpack what, where this is, you know, how do you have, where do you get your objections from? What, you know, so it's, it was really, it was actually a really sweet time. You know, it's, it's the way that I think things should go. No. I think they were from, uh, they were from, uh, it was in Fort Worth is where we we're at. So now I do you kind of some area out there? So, do you get on a like a, a kick with a, a particular teaching of scripture? Is there something that hits you from one time to another, and you really work that into your songs and your performances? And and is there anything that's really captivated your attention at the present time? Well, so the way beautiful eulogy structures our songs is we'll kind of pick um, topics that we feel either the culture needs to have a right perspective about, or needs to be addressed, or whatever, and so we we'll kind of pick a topic and then basically we spend about 20, 30 hours studying and mm -hmm. researching it, finding biblical support for what we do. And then we begin to write the song out. And so uh, we're very intentional about the songs that we write. We just don't kind of come up with a bunch of nonsense and just make them rhyme together. We just try to, we try to give like a cohesive, either systematic theology or biblical theology or, yeah, just unpack it in such a way where it makes sense to to you know young Christians who just don't understand theology. So, so when you're going through this theology stuff, do you do you end up having to filter some of that through like Artazuria, or uh, do you do you guys do it yourself? Um, or uh, so Humble Beast as a whole is submitted to our church hmm. functionally, and so um, our elders are super supportive of what we do. And if we ever had a question, we could I could text Art right now and ask him a question and. And he would probably fire back unless he was sleeping. Uh, I could also have another Eric Gelder, uh, another Eric, uh, Elder Jared who I could text or go grab coffee with or whatever. And, and he would help me flesh out um, some ideas or issues. Uh, but the, the cool thing about it is they would always point me to the scriptures, not some like systematic theology book. You know? Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Now, is there, a, is there a subject or a teaching that you're just on fire about right now? Honestly, my big kick right now is, is, you know, understanding biblical theology. That's been my, like, last six months, that's been my kick. I've been, like, rocked at understanding biblical theology, how to preach Christ in the Old Testament and, and all that stuff. It's just been, like, super crazy. So That's awesome. Isn't that, isn't yeah. that amazing when, when you see, start to see Christ in the Old Testament? in the Old Testament kind of blows things wide open. Well, and you know, for me, the, what, what was amazing is I always saw Christ in the Old Testament. I can't remember time because I went to the church I went to that was kind of preached that way. So, so I always saw the connection. I didn't see predestination in the Old <laughs> Testament, which I don't know how I missed. When you look at the calling of Israel and you go, how did you not see the sovereignty of God in the calling of Israel? But, but then you he see... He came it, to Israel. He came to Moses and asked, yeah, will you be my people? Yeah, but then you, see it, <laughs> then you see it so much more directly in other places, you know, and, it, and you're just like, how do you argue against the sovereignty of God? And for me, the Old Testament, I, I argue now more when somebody's trying to argue with me whether God uh, caused my salvation or whether I did. Mm. I, go, I go to the Old Testament. I mean, I, that's, mm. I start there because it's, A, it's the beginning, you know, uh, and it's it's a good place to start, uh, but B it has some of the best arguments because how do you argue with the well? Did God call the Israelites? Well, yes. Okay, my I rest. You know, like what are you going to say? God is God different? No. O okay, I rest. You know, where where <laughs> where where are we going to go with this? Where it wasn't God's choice? You know, and that's 
that's that's my thing, you know. Uh, the the guys that they get me are the you know, the guys that know just enough about Calvinism to do something like, well, do you believe in double predestination? You go, yes. Yes, I they, do. And then they go, that's horrible. Well, if God's sovereign and He elects some uh, to salvation, what did He not do to the other people? Well, and logic so, follows. Well, see, and I've said it before. Even our even an Arminian uh, soteriology would still hold to a double predestination. Those who God saw through the corridors of time would freely choose Him. He elected to uh, to redemption. Sure. And uh, and the ones that He saw would not choose Him. He elected to reprobation. So sure. even an Arminian has a double predestination. Yeah, well, it, it's just kind of interesting. Um, now, when you guys are doing all all your production. Why why do you choose different formats? Because like I noticed like some things you bring out in music, but other things like uh, that video you put up right around Easter, uh, that could have been a rap song. You turned it into a spoken word. When do you make the decision on on topics to 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 be spoken word or rap or or how do how do you how do you decide that? Yeah. So most of the spoken word pieces that that I do are are commissioned by my local church. And so uh, they'll, they'll ask me. So, for example, the first time they had me write a spoken word piece, they wanted me to do something, write something for Easter. They said, Easter is, is a day that the culture um, opens up an opportunity for us to, to preach the gospel to people where most people who don't go to church would come to church. And they said, would you consider writing a spoken word about Easter? And so uh, I was like, OK, I'll. So I started thinking about what I used to think about before I was a believer. And I, I just kind of took a shot at their, you know, presuppositions and, and broke that down. And so from there, it was a spoken word piece. So I put it on video because I felt like it could be helpful. Uh, and then again, for, uh, for Good Friday, my church had asked me if I would consider writing a spoken word piece for Good Friday. So we did the, the cup and the crucifixion. Sure. Uh, and the same thing with the incarnation piece. All those spoken word pieces came uh, as a commission from my local church. Interesting. Now, is that something you guys are going to do more of as part of Humble Beasts then, or is it just you're going to kind of limit it to what your church commissions? Or No, I mean, we. so Propaganda and myself and, uh, and even Braille, uh, Braille just more recently started doing spoken word stuff, but Propaganda and I have been doing spoken word for probably 10, 11 years, and it's kind of always been something that's been in our catalog, uh, our back pocket of, of wanting to do. Sure. And so, yeah, there's a lot of spoken word stuff on the beautiful eulogy record. Sure. You know, so we will definitely continue to do it. Um, Lord, Lord willing, we'll just continue to put stuff out. I, I really enjoy doing it. I, I find it uh, much more freeing than just writing rap songs. So this yeah. is this is kind of a technical question, though. And this is this is for for my own benefit here. But when you're doing your spoken word, do you have your entire poem memorized? Are you doing it in segments? How are you getting all that in your head and then out so perfectly? Yeah, I would say probably 90 percent of the time I have it memorized. Um, especially if I'm I'm doing it in such a way where uh, I mean they're five minute pieces, right? So I'll try to memorize it so it has enough punch and sting, and I'm not looking over my notes and you know it. But there are times when I have to write it really quickly, and I just haven't, for whatever reason, been able to retain it all. I'll go off my notes, but most of the time I memorize it. Interesting. We tried to do one, and uh, you, yours is done. Yeah, well, mine's done. We're waiting for the music on mine. I wasn't going to bring that, but we we did it. We and I had to go off my notes because I wrote. I think is it six minutes, Ryan? Six minutes, and I, for the life of me, could not <laughs> memorize the whole thing. So it, it was it was tough. We built a try or we built a. Uh, a teleprompter so that if we have that problem again i'll have it on my <laughs> teleprompter <laughs> yeah there is an advantage i mean i've been doing you know music for a long time and i've i've had to learn to write and retain uh quickly for for events and stuff like that so it's been a, a, a pattern or a discipline sure so you know don't don't be too discouraged brother it takes it takes a long time so. i'm you know what it's all right if i'm not that good at it i'll let the pros do it and move on we just we did one. I just because we kind of brought it up already. Now we we did one on a. I, I suppose it's about the sovereignty of God and a, and His choice and election. And and so I tried to bring out that I I wouldn't have even if I could have I wouldn't have asked for God to save me. Let's we'll just go ahead and yeah. Well, we could do the whole thing. Let's yeah. go ahead and hear it. Yeah. No, we've already played it here. They they've heard it. But so oh, okay. so that was kind Excuse of where we're going going for it. And 
And actually, theologically, it was great until I messed up. <laughs> I was really, really proud of it. We got it all done. And I'm listening to, there was one line in there where I said, Christ raised himself. And I thought, and when I wrote it, I thought, I'm not sure I like that, but I passed it around, let everybody listen to it, gave it to my pastor. He said, ah, it's fine. He didn't read it. He was, he was, he read most of it. Trust me, because I'm a seminary student. Said, ah, no, it looks, I like where you're going with this. And passed it on. It was like the last, last paragraph is where that line is. And I, like afterwards, some point, well, he didn't raise himself. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, all that God is is all that God is. So you could say that, but there is some, there's some definitely definite symbolism in the idea of the resurrection and Christ being resurrected by God. Uh, mm-hmm. That's very important that I missed out on. So, so now yeah. I have to put a caveat with it. Well, it's really great, except for this one little line, this one word that I should have qualified better. So I was yeah. trying to make a God claim that Christ was God, and it didn't work out as well. So you when, know, I'm sure that when mine comes out, there'll be someone that'll say, oh, you, you should have said that differently. Yeah, well, you'll have it. So we tried. We, we tried to be as cool as you guys. We found that you guys just are naturally cooler than us. <laughs> so, oh, so we're going we're gonna to stick to the radio, and we're going to finish. I think we each have one more that we're doing, because we, we, we promised it'd be a series of four. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he definitely looks cooler than us. Although, I got to say, you look like a very normal Thomas. Yeah, you don't look that odd. I mean, he's got the stretched ears, so... Do you get do you get stuff about because you guys you guys have some tattoos and stuff because like I know Cor- Cortland's got his, the sole of uh, fide on his knuckles, which yeah. I would get if he didn't have. He ruined it for me by having those. Yeah, yeah I, those look pretty tough on him too. Yeah, well, I would have you know I'm all sleeved up, so I'm like, man, it'd be perfect to get sole because I've got sola gratia on my leg, so oh, okay. I, I would I would have gone with sola fide all day long, but. Uh, now I can't because I'll just be copying Cortland, and that's not cool. I don't want to. I don't want to copy some other dude. So well, you could always just do it a little bit differently. Yeah, it's still copying. Do it, I mean, no, do it. Sola has like eight letters. I mean, yeah, that, that's exactly it. You're, it, it. That's the only one it works. O- only one. Do uh, do it in papyrus font. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I I'm just gonna pass on the knuckle tattoos. Is what I'm gonna have to do, and. The, that's probably okay because as I've entered seminary, um, people ask me more questions like, so you're going to be a pastor? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of the goal. I may not be. We'll see what God's doing with this. And they go, so how do you think people are going to react to your tattoos? And, I'm, and I look at them and go, well, how did you just react? Poorly. Okay, well, that's, that's how I think people are going to react to them. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think it's as horrible as you think it's going to be. I mean, well, the, it is it's not more of a common thing now for people to have them. So. It's not horrible. It's just you have to answer those questions constantly. Well, that's fine. I mean, yeah, it's not it, that he's it real. old. It gets old. So do you guys have, is he the only one that's got tattoos and a beautiful eulogy? Or are you guys all inked up too? No, I mean, we, we, we all have tattoos. I don't think Brian or Braille has tattoos yet, but he desires them. And I think the next time we actually go to Long Beach, we got a buddy in Long Beach that hooks it up. So, Ryan turned my mic off because my producer was talking to my ear. We just need to get that button fixed on the board so he can, <laughs> he can talk on my ear. Uh, we, ha- we have a, a caller on. Uh, Thomas, and they actually want to back us up to the regulative principle. So, so I don't know where they're going with this, but uh, we're going to bring them on. We we love it when people call in. Catherine, you're on the phone here with the Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, what did you want to say about the regulative principle? Um, well, I just had a comment, and I've had a lot of interruptions tonight. My elderly father lives with me, and I kind of take care of him. And I've had a lot of interruptions, so I haven't followed the entire night. I've had to. Uh, leave the my computer off and on. Okay. But um, I did want to comment on the regulative principle and just say that I came out of a really, really, really liberal denomination. Sure. And um, I had never even heard of anything such as that. And I left the denomination I was in because they had gotten so far out there. And, you know, I could just see it wasn't going to get any better, and it just got farther out there and farther out there. And it's very comforting to me to know that there are churches that follow the regulative principle because it's a protection um, for people in the church that, you know, it's a protection from that. And I, I find a real security in that. 
And uh, it's a protection for the church and for the people in it from these things that are so harmful. As a guy raised in a church that followed the regular principle, every I, I'm not saying what the other churches are doing that are outside of the regular principle is wrong. I, I won't make that judgment. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely feel uncomfortable. I feel safer uh, the closer we get to trying to be scriptural in worship. And so, so for me, I, I can't I can't put myself outside that. If I didn't. I don't really want to be a stuffy Presbyterian. It just, yeah. it's just, it's where I landed because it's where I felt safest because it's where I saw the Bible being given as much uh, authority as possible. Yeah, but I got to tell you, I even find comfort in the word stuffy Presbyterian. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and I, ha- I hate to say that, but it, um, I, and I don't think a lot of Christians in these churches that have really gone this other way. I had never heard of the regulative principle or any of any of a lot of this, and I um, I think if more Christians, they don't know where to go. A lot of the Christians that want to jump out of what they're in, they don't know there's anywhere they can go. Mm-hmm. And I am very hopeful that um, things like your radio show and the fact that it's on the internet and people have access to it. I, I am very hopeful that it will be very helpful to Christians in that situation to see that there is somewhere they can go. Well, and that, that's our hope. Our, our whole mission here, Catherine, and thank you very much for the call. Um, and hopefully, I hate it when I have to do that. I drop people, and I'm telling them thank you very much for the call, and they don't get to hang on for any... So so it's not a bad thing. I didn't hang up on you. I was actually going to ask her a question. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to speak up faster. Um we're got ten minutes, so for rapid fire hand down. She can she can contact us on Facebook. Yeah, um, rapid fire. But that that was kind yeah. of the goal of this radio show was to lift up works like Humble Beast, uh, mi- uh, ministries like Humble Beast. Uh, maybe you don't like to be called min- ministry, so uh, just things like Humble Beast that that tell you there's more out there. Uh, you know, we we love that part of this show because it's very important. Because what I did find uh, is a lot of people don't understand that there. are alternatives to what's being taught in, in you know, an open Bible church, something like that, 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 that deals a little more with their understanding of Scripture. Or that there's um, music acts out there that are very talented, uh, but that are also clearly presenting a pure gospel that's rich in theology, Sure, that they don't have to listen to, um, you know, I left your name on high and I left it, left it, left well, it. Well, you know, we've said this before on the show, but a lot of, a lot of contemporary Christian music if you put your girlfriend's name over Jesus, it would be a brilliant love song. It would be a very vulgar love song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, it just, it's weird. I mean, it, Jesus isn't my girlfriend. Jesus, yeah. He's my Lord, and so I, I want to treat him as such. Well, and even the ones where Jesus isn't my girlfriend, uh, it's um, it's about me. You know, it's, an, it's to use big words again, it's anthropocentric. It, it, it's, it, it's, sure. It's, when you throw God, it's when God comes up. Can't it's we just not, say self centered? I mean, well, that that's, ma- no, that's egocentric. Anthropocentric is man centered. Okay. Oh, well, then you Okay. Can so, just, so I have a question. Please, uh, so please do. What if you, what if in a worship context you have an electric guitar and you are singing songs that are, that are completely Christocentric? Okay. Um, so, so this is, I say that because this is my fear. I think it's easy for people to live in a black and white world. You sure. know, like this, this, this doesn't say we could do it. So therefore we don't do it. It's safe. And I think like real Christianity is lived that like lived in the gray area. I don't mean doctrinally or, you know, in terms of being liberal, but at the same time, you, you, with, with the comment that she just made, I, I find that, I mean, to, that's just strange to me. It's just strange to me because I think you could express worship to God um, and, and be very crystal centric and still play the electric well, guitar. Well, sure. we'll, we'll go around and answer it because I know Brian's <laughs> chomping at the bit. Uh, my answer, uh, Thomas, is I, I think you can. I, yeah, I, I don't. Indeed. I don't have a problem at all with an electric guitar. We use one in my church. We have a bass. Uh, Ryan, the producer, plays bass in our church. Uh, but what we do and, and what I think is best uh, is 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 that we worship alongside of those things. They don't become a performance. My only real problem with those instruments and in worship is when it becomes a performance. Correct. Now, what now? Brian has probably a different opinion. Again, understand that we got three guys that apply the uh, regulative principle differently, and and we don't know how. Unfortunately, maybe we should have qualified with Cat, Cat, Catherine a little bit more how she qualified it. But Brian, what was your, what would be your response? Sure. Well, I mean. <laughs> 
I would I would object to an electric guitar in worship, and and the the particular reason I would object is because I believe that instruments were part of the ceremonial worship of the temple, and with the abolishment of the ceremonial law and the temple, our worship now no longer has instrumentation. They weren't used in the temple um, in the sense of accompaniment the way that we have it now, but they actually had their own symbolic meaning within the ceremonial law. And so a, a lot of this, I, I understand what you're saying, that there are a lot of gray areas in our lives um, as Christians, and not everything is clear-cut and black and white. Since you're studying um, biblical theology and the Old Testament, I mean, I would rest so much on what I see in the Old Testament. I, I would draw a line from Deuteronomy 12, and when God speaks to the children of Israel, telling them not to uh, do anything which he has not commanded them, I see that principle carry through into our new covenant worship as well, and that, that's where I would end and, and ground my understanding. And um, <clears throat> I guess, I think it's going to be a consistent theme here on Rebels Cause now that we have Brian on staff, that I'm going to find myself smack dab in the middle of Dan and Brian. Um, I'm the liberal one, which is the weirdest place in the world. <laughs> any, in, any, in any other context, any he's other a staunch context, conservative. Yeah, but in any in other this, context, I'm the stuffy Presbyterian kid. And see, I used tattoos. to be the, until until Brian came along, I was the extremist, and now I get to be the mediating voice. <laughs> hey, um, could I just have something to say? So you don't prefer to have any instruments at all, correct? Right. I don't think that instruments are a part of New Covenant worship. Do you feel that they sing singing, acapella? Oh, so you, acapella, but yep. they do use a pitch pipe, which is an so, instrument of no, sorts. No, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, what is the difference between an instrument and using us the pitch as pipe. using us as instruments? Well, one is commanded and one is not. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Easy as that. I don't. You guys <laughs> so overhead projectors? Uh, well, uh, uh, we, we don't. We. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. No, I don't. No, I don't either. We um, do. <laughs> but but you have to understand um, that I would make a distinction between an element of worship and a circumstance of worship, that which is common to all peoples and places and not just particular to the Christian church. So when I'm using a microphone, um, uh, if, if I'm participating in a worship service, um, I don't see that microphone constituting a sacred element of worship, whereas I see the instrument as doing so. Okay, and I'll make I'll kind of def I'll kind of clear that up a little bit for you too. Um, element circumstance, element is we meet for worship. Circumstances we meet at nine o'clock or ten o'clock, or we meet at seventy two degrees or sixty eight degrees. Uh, the regular to principle guys, we we think that the the elements are what's commanded and forbidden. The circumstances are circumstances. Um, now you could argue regulatively that a guitar is a circumstance rather than an element. Um, I don't know that I, I don't, I don't go where Brian goes to, to say that instrumentation is forbidden. I don't, I don't see that argument, uh, holding, but, um, my objections, the reason I'm uncomfortable with guitar, part of its background, I came from a very sloppy background. I was the bass player on the praise team. You know, I played bass, I played guitar. I even sang a couple times, but, um, I, I object. I can't object to a guitar per se on uh, regulative grounds, but I can object to performances on regulative grounds. I'm about to have a pencil thrown at me. Um, <clears throat> I and and um, also you gotta hurry up here. I know. Well, you, telling me to hurry up is gonna slow me down. <laughs> uh, okay. So any anyway, um, I I so I. I have a problem from the performance perspective, but even if um, you don't go that far, I also don't want to have anything that emphasizes the transcendence of God to the point where you m miss the imminence, and I don't want to have anything where you focus so much on the imminence of God where you miss the transcendence. Contemporary worship has a tendency to, to overemphasize the imminence of, of God at the expense of the transcendence. Brian, final word? <laughs> or, uh, I think that if you accept uh, organs in church, then you have no argument against electric guitars. Same I, thing for pianos. Good. Well, I accept I, organs. So we're passing. Hey, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, what do you do? We do we explain our positions well enough? Yeah, yes. absolutely. You, all good. Are, are you scared of us yet? <laughs> nah, not at all. Are you going to come I, to I just church? always find it very interesting when folks you, use language like, "I find it safer this way." Sure. Right? Or living in the living outside of the gray area is is a is a better way of living Christian life. And I think if that were the case, then most of us wouldn't go do evangelism in bars and uh, you know. Or uh, so it's just I don't know. It's yeah, we're Presbyterians. We'll go have a drink in a bar. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. so that's the beautiful. That's part. not very safe. 
Well, yeah. but again, we make the distinction between when we're called to worship and when we're living our lives. All right. All right. Here we are. We're the last minute. Hey, Odd Thomas, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us. Um, you can find everything about Humble Beast at a humblebeast.com. Not a humble beast, just humblebeast.com. Uh, great website, free music. Uh, this is really awesome. A really good free music uh, is right there. Uh, this is that show every week we encourage you to read your Bibles, to actually read them, to know what they say, to, to, to take them and, and meditate on, on the Word. Go to church, a good Bible-believing church, one that teaches the entire counsel of the Word of God. Love Jesus. He's our Savior. And forsake the world. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. Until next week. Understand me, where will I stand in?